Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting quartic equation. We have z minus 1 over z to the fourth power equals 16 and we're going to be solving for z values. Try to guess the solutions at this point and then check your answers against mine. And I'll be presenting two methods. But before we start solving this problem, let's go ahead and take a look at the expanded form. Does this make any sense? If you use the binomial theorem with the fourth power, you hopefully know that there is a formula, right? The binomial theorem. A plus B to the fourth can be expanded. A to the fourth plus 4A cubed B plus 6A squared B squared plus 4AB cubed plus B to the fourth. Notice the symmetry, notice the coefficients, and notice the powers of A and B, how they interact. Okay, cool. So that's the type of equation we're going to get. And let's see how we can solve this problem. Of course, you don't want to solve it in this form because even if you replace Z squared with something like W, Z, I don't know, I mean W or some T, whatever, it's still going to be a quartic equation. But uh, will have a lot of coefficients. So the original problem is actually easier. So let's deal with that directly. z minus 1 over z to the fourth power equals 16. So let's start with the first method. And you probably realize that, hey, there's a real number whose fourth power is 16. What's that number? It's 2, right? So the obvious solution should be 2. I'm not saying z equals 2. I'm just saying what's inside the parentheses can equal 2 so that its fourth power is 16. But... 2 is not the only number. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to use substitution. I'm going to set z minus 1 over z equal to w, which is another complex number. And this simplifies the process because I now only need to deal with w to the fourth power equals 16. Isn't that nice? Substitution is awesome. Of course, we have to back substitute at the end. But now we get this. So let's put everything on the same side. And this looks like difference of two squares, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and factor it into w squared plus 4 times w squared minus 4 from difference of two squares. And then consider each factor. Set each factor equal to 0. You get w squared equals negative 4. You hopefully know, if you have a little bit of knowledge with complex numbers, you will know that w can be 2i or negative 2i. Because by definition, we know that i squared is negative 1. So 2i, if you square 2i, you're going to get 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. Makes sense? I hope it does. So those are the two solutions, and then there's two more. If you set w squared equal to 4, obviously, w is 2, but it can also be negative 2. I'm not saying the square root of 4 is 2 and negative 2 or plus minus 2, but I'm just saying that there are two numbers whose square equals 4. Those numbers are 2 and negative 2. you got to think complex, not real. So we got four solutions, and then w we need to back substitute. Let's go ahead and do it. Take one of these solutions, for example, 2i, and set w equal to z minus 1 over z, and that equals 2i. How do we solve this equation? At this point, again, make a guess. See if you can guess the answer. It should not be too hard. But let's proceed with the solution. I'll multiply everything by z. z squared minus 1 equals 2iz. Let's put everything on the same side and make this a full quadratic. All right, great. Since this is a quadratic, we can use the quadratic formula. Let's use it. I know some people are thinking differently, but we'll get to that, don't worry, in a little bit. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 4. Notice that if you square this, you're going to get negative 4, right? We know that. Minus 4ac, that will be a plus 4. All of that is divided by 2. Uh-oh. Negative 4 and positive 4 cancel out. Pretend to be surprised. And this gives us i. How is that possible? The discriminant is 0. What is that supposed to mean? It means that it's a perfect square. Is it? doesn't look like it. Is negative 1 a perfect square? Yes, in the complex words. If you replace negative 1 with i squared, you're hopefully going to realize that this is z minus i quantity squared. And that gives us one solution, not two solutions. You know, some quadratic equations have one solution, even if some coefficients can be complex or imaginary, right? They can have one solution. All right, so it's like z equals i, but why? <laughs> okay, you know the answer. So z equals i is a solution. But we only got this for the uh, one of the factors, 
if you set this equal to negative 2i, then you're going to get something like this, right? And then when you put everything on the same side, you're just going to get this. And from here, z is going to become negative i. Remember, we were looking for z, not for w, and we got two of the solutions. How many solutions in total are there? Let's find out. Obviously, I didn't use a, all of the w values. If you do, for example, if you just set this equal to 2 and then multiply by z, you're going to get this. And if you put everything on the same side, this will give you another quadratic equation which you can solve very easily. Come on, you can do this, right? I mean, you could even use the Poisson laws formula, which is known as Poisson laws, but he didn't invent it. He just, you know, uh, published it before anyone else, I guess, is the first one. And then I made a video and some pe other people made videos too. Anyways, that method is basically uses something like, okay, the sum of the roots from Vieta's formulas is two. So each root has to have a one component and then one plus something like one plus n, maybe one minus n. And then their product is gonna be c over a, which is negative one. One minus n squared is negative one. n squared is two n is plus minus root two. So from here you get one plus minus root two as the solutions to one and so forth. Come on, you know this. You can just use the direct, uh, quadratic formula directly because I can't wait to show you the second method, okay? Does the second method, is the second method much better? You'll get to decide. But remember, we call this thing W. So let's pick it up from there. We have W to the fourth power equals 16. Why not use polar form and complex numbers? So we can basically write 16 as 16 times e to the power two pi and i. Remember, you can complexify any real number and you can do so by multiplying it by e to the power 2 pi and i, depending on the sign. If it's a negative number, then you use uh, pi i plus 2 pi n i. Anyways, so this makes sense hopefully because this is 1 in the complex world, so this is 16. But if you take the fourth root, so I have w to the fourth equals this, right? When you take the fourth root, you're going to get four fourth roots because the complex number has four fourth roots. The fourth root of 16 in the real world is 2, and then this is going to become 2 pi ni over 4, which is pi ni divided by 2. How many values are there? Well, n can be 0, 1, 2, 3. When n equals 4, you get back to square 1. So if n is equal to 0, you get w equals 2. Awesome. If n is equal to 1, you get w equals 2 times e to the power pi i over 2. Pi over 2 is basically the argument for i. So this is going to be 2i. Make sense? And then n equals 2 and n equals 3 are going to give you the exact same solutions. The rest is pretty much similar. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.